just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar, or should I say Goat in a Bar, because we have the great <laughs> Mark the Goat. That's what your name says on Wiki, so we're going to refer to it. Mark Nichols, mate. How are you going, mate? Are you, uh, how are you feeling after a year that I'm sure you couldn't have predicted uh, how you would end with uh, being called Mark the Goat, but also making a grand final? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on, firstly. Um, yeah, it's been a crazy, yeah. crazy, uh, crazy year. I've always, you know, said that rugby league's a bit like a roller coaster, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, certainly this year's hit some highs that even I didn't even, yeah, I guess maybe dreamed about. But yeah, to actually come true, uh, it's been crazy, mate. What was it like when you know you started getting a bit of momentum of you know being kind of like, because like you know when you're like yourself you're just a battler in the middle doing your job yeah and then like slowly you start getting attention and people really you know i i i, I remember it really hitting the floor when you scored two tries i think it was yeah but it was also a little bit before that were you like were you thinking what the fuck's going on here like <laughs> i'm getting a bit of traction here people are really like getting called mark the goat and that yeah it was um funnily enough it probably started um three or four years ago when i first when i first came to the club mm. um you know, as a, as a player, you sort of, I mean, it's, you try not to get on social media sometimes, yeah. but, um, you know, we're obviously on social media, mm. have accounts, uh, have family and friends that are on social media. And uh, when I first come to the club, I, there used to be sort of, they almost looked like a group of mates and they'd sort of get on um, some South posts. And then eventually one of them sort of said, you know, as a bit of a joke, you know, he's the goat, leave him alone. And um, and then it sort of just, it sort of just rolled from there and a couple of, um, you know, a couple of fans jumped on board last year. I, you know, I scored a scored a couple of tries last year, and um, you know, a few fans sort of sort of started to, I guess, um, pick up on these guys that were sort of taking the piss out of me a bit and stick up for me, and yep. then um, you know, almost start actually appreciating um, <laughs> the work that you get, the hard working middle, and <laughs> and then yeah, you know, like my brother in law, um, yeah, you know, at the start of this year, he sort of. He sort of was starting to notice, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd ring me up or he'd come in and say, you know, um, you, know I'll, I'll, you know, there's more and more fans are starting to call you the goat. And <laughs> sort of, you know, started to, uh, at that stage, still laugh about it. But then, yeah, when it started the mid year and it started yeah. to really pick up, I almost, at first, I was a bit embarrassed about it, you know, because clearly not the, I'm clearly not the goat. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I had an interview with, with Lockie at, at one stage. I think it was before I was, the game I was captain and I said you know I'm clearly not the goat but um you know as the season's finished and and sort of I guess reflecting a little bit on the thing I guess now I sort of I have embraced it um yep. you know I've even sort of referred to myself as the goat um on social media <laughs> and give the give it. the fans what they want but yep. you know I guess for for the fans it just they probably can relate to the the average bloke you know and that's sort of who I see myself as and yep. you know a, a guy that just does his job and turns up every week to just try and do his best and yep. you know the fans can relate to that and um you know I, I may as well uh, embrace it I guess because I don't think it's going to go away it's <laughs> you know it's funny is like the man suited to be called the goat is a man that doesn't think he's the goat <laughs> yeah. so it actually you know what I mean it's like the perfect leader is someone who doesn't want to lead but yeah. you know he just puts himself in there yeah I um, guess it's a um it's a bit like every nickname you know you sort of Nicknames that stick are the ones you generally don't really yeah. like at the start. Yeah. Well, like you call the beak. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of, my name, the people's beak. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to cop it. Yeah, you sort of fight it a bit and then eventually you just embrace it because yeah. it's not going to go away. No. So. 100%. Like getting called the beak in front of your missus and you're always like, oh, man, like just getting sprayed. <laughs> hey, beak. It's yeah. like, fuck, for some random. Yeah. Um, but now it's, you just, yeah, as you said, you've got to embrace it because it's, um, hey, it's just fucking, it's better than not being called anything. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so, so when it when it really picked up, like really picked up, what was the was the chat? Was the boys giving it to you? You know, fuck, oh, they go here he is. Yeah, I think the boys obviously as well picked up on it. You know, when the fans started to pick up on it a bit, and um, mm. you know, they sort of, you know, as I said, like most nicknames, is, I guess because I was a little bit uncomfortable with it, the boys yep. sort of rolled with it yeah, even more, and. Yep. Um, you know, eventually I just I just had to embrace it because yep. I realised it wasn't going away. Mate, it's so good. <laughs> it's so, so good. So this year for you, you know, you, you played, I think you played some of your best footy for sure, for sure. Um, you know, like um, your metres were up. You were, 
Yeah, like I, I really started to see you as, and this is coming from a guy that was also a fringe first grader. Yeah. Um, as a guy that would be on the bench and, you know, come on and do his job. But I felt like this year you were actually, you know, not actually, but you are impacting games. Did it feel like that or was this something you'd kind of been building towards prior years? Oh, yeah, like no doubt this year's been my best year. Yeah. Um, and I guess, yeah, I, to be honest, probably saw myself a bit at that way too, you know, yeah. like um, just that guy that could do his job off the bench and mm. um, wasn't going to let anyone down. And I guess, you know, that's what Wayne saw in me when he first came to the club and, and why, you know, Wayne played me every week. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, you know, half early in the year or halfway, it was probably about a third through the year, you know, Wayne sort of, said I'm going to start you yeah. and um, yeah from there I guess I sort of just um, confidence and belief great thing for a footy player and it's crazy what he can do for you eh? yeah I, it's no. just crazy I know I know I um like I, I, I didn't know Wayne mm. before he came to see us but I remember you know any any player that spoke about him was mm. it, it was almost like he was this you know like this father figure almost yeah. like this god yeah and yeah. um and you know and and I just now like now i'm that player that's yeah, how i talk about absolutely. him you know, that's how i see him and yep. um you know he's just he's the best there's, there's this weird he gets you in this weird space of like fully backing yourself but without the stress of if i stuff up like it's the end of the world yeah which is like weird because <laughs> then you tend not to stuff up but when yeah. you're thinking about stuffing up and worried about it you fucking start dropping balls left right and center yeah well, was that where you were at well you know like as you said, as a fringe player, you sort of know that mm. that one drop ball, you know, <laughs> Monday <laughs> drop you. Monday morning, you know, that's mate, you know, you drop that ball, I'm, I'm dropping you, hundred um, percent. And so you know, you know that if you drop that ball, you miss that tackle, yeah. it could be the thing that gets you dropped on Monday. Literally, and literally. You're, you're um, <laughs> and you're, as a fringe player, you, you sort of, you know, you're almost you're almost waiting for that tap on the yeah. shoulder to come because it's happened so many times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mate, I'm feeling you. Um, but yeah, with with. Yeah, you know, with Wayne, I just I just never felt like that mm. um, tap on the shoulder was coming. You know, from from it was the January that so Wayne came just before Christmas with all the all the stuff with um, the club, South and and Brisbane um, was sorted, and he and he and he came just before Christmas, and he and then you know it was mid January, so he he sort of had only been there for three or four weeks, and yeah. um, and I still remember the meeting. We had a sort of a team meeting. We're about to go out to train, and he just said to me and Junior Totola. Um, hey boys, just stay in after the meeting or we'll whatever. Chat to you, and then he he said, you know, I've been here now a month or whatever it was, and he said I've watched you two guys train. I've I've now watched every game from last season. Um, you know, I, I know you guys have been sort of on the bench. You know, maybe me in and out of the team, and mm. um, and he sort of just said, you know, I see you both as first grade front rowers, and he said I'm going to pick you both round one. Um, off the bench to mm. be the two front rowers, yeah. And and I, I, like I went out of that meeting and I just had never had that and yeah. um and I'd never you know like I'd been to two other clubs um you know Canberra and Melbourne and you know that time of year the coaches are saying you know I'm going to pick the team on who's training good and who plays well in preseason yeah. trials and yeah yeah in reality you know that probably 15 spots have been decided in November yeah absolutely but um. You know, to, for Wayne to sort of come out and and say that to me and and Junior at that time, I just it was, and then he sort of just said, you know, like now you've got nothing to worry about. Yeah. So just go out and train like an NRL first grader and yep. play well in the trials, and you'll be in the team round one. Like yeah. you've got nothing to worry about. I'm going to pick you. Yeah. And so from day one, you know, like he had that belief and confidence in me, and so therefore I had it in myself, and yeah. I didn't want to let him down, and yep. um. You know, it just it just snowballed over the three year period that he right. was my coach. It's like it sounds outside looking in. It sounds like you know what that's. Of course, you're a first grader. You should already think that. Yeah. But you, the the confidence and the the goal as well. Like when he says to you, you're going to be on the reserve grade. Yeah, sorry, you're going to be on the bench. You're going to be playing first grade. I see you as a first grader. It almost lights a fire. Yeah. Uh, it actually. Some people think well, that would actually make you work less hard because you already have the position, you don't have to worry about it, but it actually makes you probably work harder because you get this kind of confidence in like, I'm here now, like, yeah. wow, I'm here, I'm not, I don't want to let go of it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it just, and you, you know, because he has backed you, yep. um, you don't want to let him down. Absolutely. And, and, you know, 
as footballers, we'd want to turn up the training and train hard and, yep. and put our best foot forward. And, mm. um, you know, to get, I guess that's what Wayne does well is he just gets, he gets players and he gets them in that um, frame of mind. And, and therefore, when you turn up on the weekend, that's the, that's the easy part. You just, you just want yep. to rip in and, and um, you know, and not let him down, as I said. Uh, this year, rolling into, so you have the 50 point loss, and I spoke to Cam about this as well, the two 50 point losses. Um, did Cam say it was because he didn't play? <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually said it was because he didn't play. <laughs> no, he would never say He's that. He's too humble, he which would is never crazy to think. If I was that good looking and that good at footy, <laughs> I would be so arrogant. My, yeah. You couldn't fit my head through the door. Be fucking. I mean, you can't fit me beak through the door, nearly. Me head and me beak um, if I was that good. But did was did that rattle you? Did you feel like it rattled? Was you always like, nah, we can turn this around? I, no, I don't think it rattled us. Um, you know, looking back, I think it was the best thing that happened to us because, mm. you know, from the time that Wayne had come to the club, you know, I mean, you look at history, the best, the team that generally wins is the, like the best defensive team. And, yeah. um, you know, to make the top four, you've got to generally be in the top four yeah. defensive teams. Um, and so we'd always spoken, like, you know, about wanting to be a better defensive team. Like, mm. you know, I think when, when people think about South Sydney, they think of our attack. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, that's the part of the game that comes easy mm. to a, a lot of players in our team yeah. and as a result, our team. Um, and I guess we'd always, you know, we'd spoken about being a better defensive team and we'd worked on better being a better defensive team. But I think after those games, we worked out, um, you know, to beat a Melbourne or a Penrith, you know, you're not going to beat them 52 to 50. Yeah, so true. To, um, to beat those guys, we're going to have to get better defensively. And yeah. I think, um, you know, after those games, I think we started, you know, it's not like we weren't taking it seriously, but it just, it was like it clicked, you mm. know, in everyone's heads. It was like, you know, if we want to get to where we want to go, yeah. you know, we're going to have to, to we're going to have to def defend better. Yep. And, um, and, and, you know, and then from there, it just, you know, we did start defending better and we changed a few things, you know, on the edges and um, not that I really know what they were doing, <laughs> but um, we did, you know, we did sort of try and change a few things and and then, you know, a, as that worked, um, we got confidence and started to see the results and, mm. you know, and then, you know, almost that grand final, you know, we we defended our, our line for most of the game and yeah. nearly got the result in the end, but... Mate, it was crazy how much your defence improved, like, from that period. Like, you went from, as you said, a team that was purely known for attack to, like, a, a gritty, almost Melbourne Storm, Penrith-like. Like, it was, the, this change was incredible. Um, and, I mean, I remember on the podcast that we do weekly, you know, me and Fincher would always say, like, the only thing they need to fix is their defence. And if they sort their defence and their completions, they sort that, yeah. they'll be in the grand final. And you just did. Like, yeah, you yeah. absolutely did. And just, like... Did you do a lot of work on your first contact? I just thought your first contact towards the end of the year was some of the best in the comp. Oh, we did, um, no, yeah, not necessarily. We, we started doing a bit more, you know, Wayne's, not, Wayne's never been a wrestle yeah, absolutely. guy. Um, but we, st we started doing a little bit more of, of it, just, um, you know, not, not so much wrestle, but yeah, a bit of that first up contact. And we did it early in the morning, you know, yeah. like it was like a six o'clock, uh, on long turnarounds, um, you know, three days out for a game, we'd come in early and, and mm. sort of get it out of the way. Um, kind of like hit and stick kind of stuff? Yeah, and that, just that kind of hit and stick stuff. And it was on the mats in the gym. We didn't, you know, it's not a, it yeah. wasn't a very big space. So it yep. wasn't like we were ripping in and it wasn't hard work, but it was just, I think, mentally, um, mm. you know, just knowing that that's what we, we needed to do on yep. the weekend, which Mate, really, so good. really like, started to help us. And, and I think the other thing that helped us is, we started, um, you know, we really started getting some line speed going, yeah. which, um, mm. you know, I think obviously in today's game helps enormously. Yeah. And yeah, going into those, going into the finals, you know, internally we knew we had improved a hell of a lot as a defensive team. You know, like some of the statistics, we were the best in the comp mm. from that Penrith game, you know, which was a yeah. long period of time. And that's what Wayne and, and JD really, emphasized going into the finals which gave us a lot of confidence you know like it wasn't like we'd just been doing this for four weeks into the finals we'd been yep. doing it for you know two-thirds of the comp yeah no it was um yeah it was truly like a noticeable difference of like wow their defense is just 
it, it, like, put, like if I'm being brutally honest, every week I was waiting for the South from the start of the year. You know how sometimes you go for runs of like, oh, we defended really good for two, three weeks. And then you have that one game where you go to your old habits and that. Yeah. And it just like never came. It yeah. just never came. Yeah. Um, and I think when it really drove home, like, wow, th- this is the way they play now. Like they've tr- changed the way they play, at least in attack, was the win against Penrith in the first, um, the final. Did that, yeah. did that kind of cement, I mean, you would have already been confident, but did that kind of be like, we can win a premiership, you know? Yeah, I think we, um, you know, we played Penrith about a month before that. Yep. And, and for the first 30 minutes, you know, like we were, we were all over them mm. defensively. And, um, and they scored two tries just for half time off kicks. And, it, and, then, and then, you know, the second half, we just couldn't, you know, we sort of, a bit like the GF, we just couldn't get out of, out, out of our own end. And we kept giving away penalties and sort of shot ourselves in the foot a bit. But we took a lot of confidence from that first 30 minutes. And, and then, yeah, going into that, that first final, um, you know, we, we did, we did defend it well and got the result. And, yep. um, yeah, I, I guess, you know, we sort of knew we'd improve, but it was good on a, in a big game like that. Yeah, to, absolutely. To against against the team side. that we'd sort of hadn't beaten for, a, you know, a couple of years to, yep. to um, give us the confidence moving forward. And so, so you play, you have the week off and then you play Manly. Yeah. Siren, go, you mean you, you win quite handedly. Siren goes off and you're in a grand final. What's the, what's the chat like then for the boys? Oh, I think, um, you know, like it was almost half time we had to have that chat because we were up, I think it was 24 nil. Yeah, it was it, crazy. Um, you know, and Wayne had sort of said, <laughs> like, still got another half to go. Don't, don't, you know, get too far ahead of yourselves. Yep. But, um, you know, after that 80, it was like, yeah, we've, we've made a grand final, especially because, you know, for three years we'd lost in the prelim. And, yeah. You know, we'd, did, we'd, we'd gone a different route. We'd won that first week, which we hadn't done before. And, um, you know, but it was just, it was, yeah, we were in the grand final, which is, I guess, what every team starts starts yeah. out, you know, training this time of year to do. Mm. Um, and we'd done it, but, yeah, we unfortunately we lost it. Didn't get it chalky. So, so walk us through the, the, what do you remember mainly from the grand final? Is there any moment on the field or the lead up or... Oh, the lead up, yeah, the lead up was, um, you know, it would, it would have been, it would have been crazy. I, I, like the lead up was crazy enough up there, but you know, if we were down here at Redfern, yeah, wow, you know, like it would have been, uh, it would have been crazy. Mm. Um, you know, but the week, the week was great, and then <laughs> the thing that I remember the most, I guess, in the grand final is when I did come off, um, you know, twenty minutes in, and I was like, it was the quickest. Yep. the quickest 20 minutes of footy Crazy. i've ever played and um and i remember thinking geez if this is what origin's like I, you know <laughs> <laughs> those blokes are crazy um, yeah yep. no nah, but like yeah i just especially because it felt like we we just were defending and mm. um you know when you're in that washing machine in the middle and you're, you're doing yep. a lot of defense you're just sort of just sort of hanging on um and yeah it's just it was that was the, my initial first the thing that will stick with me was just how quick that first 20 minutes yep. was. Mate, their, their ability to, their kicking game and just to keep you constantly coming off your own line. Did it, what, was, what was the chat like? Because usually when stuff like that happens, one team breaks. Yeah. But like no, neither team broke. It was yeah. just this constant battle. Was there discussions in the middle of like, you know, one set or how did you chat to each other about just pushing each other to keep, keep going, keep going, don't break? Yeah, I guess, yeah, the chat was, you know, like, let's just keep going, you yeah. know, like, momentum will turn it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, I, like, we felt, it felt like, um, you know, it felt like we were just, like, one penalty or one error from breaking that momentum, but it yeah. just never seemed to come. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was confident that if we could get a fair share of possession, you know, we would score tries. Yeah. Um, and and you know in the end it sort of it didn't come till you know the seventy fifth minute but yeah you know Cody got one chance in the first half and that was just him being <laughs> Cody Walker yeah. yeah and we score and then the second half you know we almost have to wait another thirty five minutes to get a crack at their line and yeah and AJ scores and um you know it just you know fair play to to Penrith they were a better team and yeah um you know they just they just they played their game perfectly. They just kicked us yep. in corners and kick chased and just defended it, defended their hearts. Uh, out. It was it was a wild, high, like high quality, especially defensive game. But um, take us back to a young fella. 
born now not born specifically in Wagga Wagga or near Wagga Wagga or uh, no I was I was born in Wagga Wagga but yep. um, only because uh, I got transferred or well, I went there because it has a private hospital yeah um, and I was just a week past my due date mm. uh, otherwise I would have been born in Leeton like my brother and sister okay. but yeah born in Wagga um, but only stayed there for a couple of days and then Back to Leeton. Back to Leeton. Um, it says you're born to a Muslim family, but that's obviously not correct, as we discussed before the show. Yeah, no, that's not true. That's um, that's obviously someone... Someone taking the piss. Someone's got on Wikipedia. And yep. Um, but, it's, you know, you, you know, it says your full name's Mark the Goat. So don't believe... It also says on my <laughs> wiki, it says that I'm Turkish and Kiwi, which is not true. Not true. <laughs> and so people like... Turkish people like will come and be like, hey, you want to... Like, I, got a, I think I got a message actually from the Turkish national team. Yeah. Saying like, would you like to play with us and that? I was like, oh, sorry, bro. I'm actually not Turkish. I've, um, I've, heard, of some pl- so I've heard of some players um, when they get a bit older that change their date of birth on uh, wikipedia so yep yep Could there might be. be something i might have to do <laughs> <laughs> who was fuck i was speaking to i think it was like luke Patton when he was at the steelers one of the players like, like a fullback or something was had lied about his age his whole career and he was actually like five years older <laughs> than he really was <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> um okay so yeah you're born in the country so country lad like myself um, i grew up in the country um you know it's it's really different a different lifestyle hey the country lifestyle yeah, yeah, it's, um, you know, like I grew up, uh, in, well, initially it was in town, but then moved to the outskirts, so we had five acres. Yeah, um, I had five acres, I had five and a half acres. So. Well, yeah, yeah, so, you know, we had a, a dam and a motorbike, but, um, yep. you know, no no cattle or crop. Um, yep. But, yeah, for a, for a kid, it's like the perfect, it's the perfect back, you know, like your Absolutely. backyard, it's just so big. And, um, yep. yeah, at one, at one point, Dad, um, you know, made a couple of, couple of football posts and oh really yeah he sort of we had a bit of a bit of the um bit of the yards probably it was probably about 70 meters long and um 30 meters wide so how good's that had my own football field but i just uh didn't have anyone to, <laughs> to, to play, play with so yep. um you know i used to used to get out on the uh out of the football field and and pretend to be you know south sydney versus the brisbane broncos oh and, really <laughs> and, and, and play the game myself but I was it was pa- so south was always your team no nah, no nah, i actually um Growing up, I was in, I, I, I went for Melbourne Storm. The Storm. I had a, uh, you know, growing up as a kid, when you're real young, you yeah. sort of just whatever, whatever, and yeah. you got uncles and aunties and your your dad, and yeah. you know, the sort of. So I got photos of me in a Penrith jersey, a Bulldogs ball, and you know, <laughs> yeah. like a South Sydney yeah. hat. I was just sort of, you know, doing whatever, and um, you know, I was at that age when Melbourne came into the comp at eight. Mm. Um, where you sort of, I guess, you start to pick and stick, and yep. um, said, so "I'm going to go for the new t- new team." And yeah. and then uh, in 1999, uh, dad dad's a Dragons fan, and you know from Leeton, uh, we I don't think I'd ever would never come to Sydney. Oh, I think I'd been to Sydney as a kid once before, and so we, dad goes, "Well, you know, I'm going to buy tickets to the tickets to the grand final." No and, way. Um, as a nine year old kid, like. It was buzzing. Yeah, oh, you know, like, like all week you're thinking about it <laughs> from the country, and yep. uh, you know, I walked. That was, you know, when Stadium Australia was 110 thousand or whatever it was. Wow. You know, I was walked in, and I was like, "This is crazy." But yeah, um, yeah, you know, my dad loves telling this story. At half time, I took my jersey off and put my flag, uh, you know, under under my chair because Melbourne were getting beat pretty convincingly, oh, really? and. Um, <laughs> And I wanted to go home. I was a nine-year-old kid. I'd crack the shit. <laughs> and, the and, dummy. and Dad was a mad Dragons fan, so yeah. he's like, "I'm not going home. This yeah. is, you know, this is going to be the, one of the greatest days of my life." I've <laughs> yeah. Been waiting years to watch the Dragons, 100%. you know, win a, win a grand final. And to this day, Dad, Dad wishes that he went home because <laughs> obviously Melbourne, you know, came, started coming back. I yep. got the jersey back on and the flag oh, out. Yeah. And, and then, uh, you know, after the game, just. Was the flag was going everywhere and mate, yeah, dad was, was like, oh, I wish I just wish I took you home, <laughs> mate. What a good memory they'd have with your dad though. Like, yeah, you go yeah. to Dragons, you go for Storm, yeah. Um, far out, like <laughs> spitting the dummy, ready to go home, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so who, who was your favorite player growing up? Well, it was initially, um, Robbie Ross, um, mm. and then you know, Billy Slater, mm. um, so good, you know, like. Even as an 11, 12, 13 year old kid, like, yeah. um, you know, Melbourne used to have a lot of Saturday 3 p.m. games back then, and mm. um, we didn't have 
Foxtel, um, but my, my grandparents had it. And mm. so I'd play footy in the morning and yeah, then, you know, like we'd come home and if mum and dad weren't going over there, I'd jump on my bike and yep. ride out to Nan and Pops and, How good's that? and watch the Storm play. And, you know, like my nan would say, you know, I, I'd be yelling out, go Billy, go <laughs> Billy, like the whole 80 minutes, you know. Yep, yep. Um, so it's, it's, it was pretty uh, surreal to then eventually get to, Mate, get to play with him. 100%, 100%. Um, okay, so you played for the Leighton Greenies, uh, the Gungalin Bulls. Before yeah. you signed with the Raiders, but at what what point did you begin to realise that you know you might have a crack here at an NRL contract, or you're playing better than the, the kids around you? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was, I was, you know, a pretty, pretty good player out mm. in the country. You know, like I, I knew I was, um, you know, going, going good. Mm. Um, and then as a family, we moved to Canberra. Um, as, at 15, I was 15, um, and sort of played ACT 15s, and then just went for like an open tryout at the Raiders, Howard Matthews. Mm. Um, got picked in that squad, and then, um, you know, I, I sort of I still remember that that initial, we sort of had like a sad day introduction for Howard Mats, and, mm. um, you know, I, I played that, that year in Canberra as a 15 year old, and we sort of they had a meeting and they asked all the parents to come in and they sort of said you know like we're one of the better clubs at um you know producing nrl players yep. um through our junior program and and they said you know we're running at about seven or eight percent or whatever it was um so they said you know like if you look around this room you know there's probably only going to be two or three kids that will play nrl wow. and it was you know that they, they'd sort of brought you know the parents in to hear that mm. and um I remember looking around and thinking, there's about 15 kids in here that are way better than me, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, well. Um, but yeah, I, I was just always a kid that um, loved footy. So, I, you know, I loved going to training and, mm. and training hard. And um, and then, you know, it probably wasn't the next year was SG Ball. Um, so after that whole Matthews season, they sort of picked a, might have a handful of us, might have been six, um, six of us that sort of. Mm. They wanted to keep doing weights and yep. and um, you know go back and play local footy, but automatically we would be in the SG Ball squad the next year as a mm. as a seventeen year old. And I didn't really play. I didn't really play that year, but um, that year I went back to to the Gungahlin Bulls mm. and um, my first game of under 18s They pulled me off at half time and said, "You know, you're going to play first grade." No way. And um, and my dad was my dad was the manager of the under 18s team and he sort of rang my mum and said oh you know like <laughs> i don't know if he's ready for that i don't know if he's ready yeah to yeah, play yeah. men and and um and funnily enough i um at the end of that game then the first grade i was at a rugby union school and mm. um i had said to them i'm gonna play sg ball and then i'll play under 18s um for my local team, yeah. which was in the morning, and then I'll come play first 15s in the afternoon. And um, at the end of that game, I got they gave me a hundred bucks and said, yeah. here's, your, "Here's your match payment." And I went to school on the Monday and said, "I'm going to play first grade first year. I get a hundred bucks." Like, yeah, good. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that year I played against men as a 17 year old, mm. and then and so this is in the local league in Canberra. In Canberra, okay. Um, and then went back to SG Ball the next year and just mm. found it so much easier not having, to, not having to play men and mm. and at the end of that year i got picked in the uh new south wales 18s team to wow. play before origin and was that the first like big rep team that you'd made yeah and that that was that was the point i thought you know like yeah. this is I, Absolutely. you know I, I could potentially play nrl like yep. that's when the dream became you know I could see the dream maybe yep. coming true. Absolutely. Because it's like such a, before that, although you love footy, you, you're ripping and tearing, it's such such a, a grand idea that is so far away from anything in your reality. Yeah. Like I think sometimes if you're in a program from a young age, it's very easy. Oh, that guy's like me, I might be. But when you're not in programs from a young age, it's just, a, it's so far away. Yeah. But to make 18s, you're around guys that I assume are signed to other clubs. And, yeah. You know, some would probably already be in top squads the next year. Yeah, well, we, um, you know, like Wade Graham was in that team. Wow. Um, you know, like guys like that, Albert Kelly, mm. um, 
you know, they were playing for Parramatta <clears throat> and Penrith. Yep. And they were, you know, at SG ball level, yeah. you know, if you're the best player in them te- in those two teams, you know, you, like you were thinking these guys are, are made, you yep. know, like <coughs> Bloody oath. um, you know, so playing with guys like that, mm. um, yeah, it was, was crazy. Yep. Okay, so you make the under 18s. At what point do you get offered a contract to come and play for Canberra's NYC team? That that year. That year. That year. Was it from the under 18s making that side? Is that where they saw you or? Uh, no, no, it was. Sorry, it was the year before. Um, after that, after that year of playing against men. Okay. Um, yep. So that was my that was my last year. I was year 12, as I said. Okay. You know, I've, I've could have played first fifteens, but decided to take the cash and, yep. and play local first grade. Hundred bucks. That's living the dream at <laughs> that age. Are you serious? Yeah, as a seventeen-year-old. Um, so yeah, at that the end of that year, after I'd played men, um, mm. yeah, the, the Raiders club, the, the Raiders club, and come knocking and said, um, you know, you're about to finish school. Here's a three-year deal. Three-year deal. That's bloody good. Play SG ball and and um, toy at a cup for two years. Yep. Um, and said, you know. What do you want to do after school? And I sort of said, I'm thinking about going to uni. And I said, well, yeah, we'll pay for you to go to uni, which was, you know, more than what the contract was. Yeah, um, bloody oath, bloody oath. So yeah, to get to get. What did you study at uni? I did sports science and sports management. Mm. Um, you know, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, mm. uh, and saw sports and saw. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> that should be all right. <laughs> should be all right. I love sport. Um, <laughs> sports science is pretty. That's pretty intensive. Yeah, yeah. Well, initially you start off, um, you start off doing anatomy with you know people that are studying nursing and yeah, um, yeah. Doctors all start that first mm. that first anatomy course together. Um, so yeah, it's um, yeah. I, I I actually like at that time in my life, I thought you know <coughs> if I don't make it in footy, then the natural thing would be to go into strength and conditioning and yeah, for sports sure. science would sure. would get me. Um, down that route, but um, you know, I actually really enjoyed probably more of the sports management side of the degree. Oh, really? Okay. Um, Do you think you'll go into sports management eventually, um, or is your you know, I guess, passion being directed towards something else? Yeah, I think now at the now my passion is, you know, at the time I, I, I probably, you know, if I didn't go to uni, I would have I would have wanted to do building, yep. um, be a builder, um, and so when COVID hit, I I went back to uni and started. Um, a project management um, postgraduate degree yep. um, and hopefully you know sort of doing some things at the moment to just get some experience in the construction industry and, yeah. and sort of and sort of look to do that after yeah, straight okay. after footy yeah. um, so yeah I guess but but you know in saying that um, it would be good to come back uh, you know sport and rugby league you know is always going to be a pretty big passion so yep. to yep. come back at a at a management level at mm. some stage in my life is probably something i could see myself doing yeah absolutely absolutely okay so um when did you first get called in to train with the first grade squad at the raiders uh not until after after my um last year of toyota cup so yep. um i think I think at that stage, you made um, the junior kangaroos in that last year as well. I made the junior kangaroos. Uh, I think so. Initially, at one, at some stage, my contract got upgraded to like a train and trial. Yep. Um, and then when I made junior kangaroos, it got upgraded to a you full know time. like a full time gig. Yeah. Um, because at, at at that point, the Raiders used to go to South Logan. Mm. Um, oh yeah, in Queensland. In Cup. Queensland, mm. and so. There were sort of guys that would go out of twenties and do a preseason and then go live up in Queensland and just play yep. for South Logan, mm. um, which was sort of going to be the plan for me. But then made junior ruse and they said, you know, we want you here full time and yep. you'll just be a a normal squad member who flies up to play reserve grade every weekend. Yeah. Um, what was that like? That first few sessions with the big dogs. Yeah, oh, it's, it's um, <laughs> you know, like it's crazy. I, I I was in it. I went into training today just to sort of. Do some stuff in the gym and see the young guys yeah, there, and it all comes rushing back. <laughs> yeah. Those memories, yeah, that, that um, those initial trainings, and you know, sort of just even some of the guys are a bit shy to say good day to you, and yep. you think oh, that was that was me. And then, yep. um, it, it's funny, like you know, you, you sit down with some of the young guys and you say, oh, you know, like I remember the old blokes telling me it'll it'll go by so quick, and you <laughs> sort of you sort of laugh and you think, oh. Yeah, it's it's ten years. Like that's going to take forever. But yeah, 
you know, like guys said that to me when I was at the Raiders, and now I find myself saying it to the young guys. Yeah, it's <laughs> crazy. It's crazy. All the all of the advice they gave me was right. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I say the same shit to everyone. Yeah, and yeah. you know what? They're probably not going to listen to me the way I didn't listen to them. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, like the things that you just you do like you do remember and pick up. But yeah, that um, you know that Canberra Canberra squad like Alan Tung, mm. Josh Miller. Um, Joshy Miller, one of the greats. Yeah, one of the greats. Yeah, toughest, toughest bloke I've ever played with, probably. Yep. Yeah, big Tommy Leroy, Lars. You know, like some of those guys. Yeah. To all of a sudden be doing gym with them mm. and and tackling them it was like, yeah, this is this is crazy. What was the um? Was there any sessions that you remember going? Wow, the, this is the intensity I need to be at to play. Was it an army camp? Was it a a gym session, a wrestling session, or anything like that? Oh, not nah. Well, just gradually, you just kind of got think used just to it. Gradually, I got used to it. I guess, um, you know, at that stage, I was still, I was still an edge back rower. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, I, I played edge, uh, you know, all through my juniors, and then the, even that, that first year out of twenties um, when I was going to South Logan, I was still playing, playing left edge um, back rower because I, I was always just a, a tall lean guy. Yeah. Um, you know, and. I guess physically, I, I sort of just, you know, like Tommy Leroy Lars. Big boy, <laughs> so big, bro. David Shillington, like. Big boy too, yeah. Thinking of those guys, you know, the, I, was, I, I remember thinking I had to put on some weight if I wanted to play first grade. <laughs> yep, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So 2012, you make your debut against the Dragons. Yeah. What was the chat like to the dad, the old man? Uh, funnily enough, he was in America. Oh, really? Yeah, so um, I, uh, I'd been 18th man for... for for definitely three, maybe even four weeks before that. Mm. Um, so I knew, well, you know, I was hoping I was close. Yep. Um, and we, the game before was in, in Townsville and I think it might've been Trevor Thurling and someone else got, got injured and, mm. you know, it was sort of, it was one of those, it didn't, may miss a week, you know, might have to see what scans yep. are like. And, and naturally I was, you know, I was that if man, I was hoping that I was the next man in. Yep. And, um, and mum and dad and my brother and sister were going to America on like the Monday or the Tuesday. Oh, no way. And um, and dad didn't want to go. And mm. Dad was like, I'm, I'm not going. Yep. And mum said, you know, we've had this trip booked for yeah. for months. And, you know, initially, I, even when the, the team was named, um, I wasn't named in the 17. Mm. So it might have been the, it might have been even <laughs> been the Tuesday and Wednesday. So when I wasn't named, mum said, you know, dad, go. you're coming. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, it was a Monday night game. So I think it was about the Friday. Um, Fernsey told me before training, yeah. you're playing on Monday night. So What do you remember from the debut? Um, Were you still edge? No, nah, no. Nah. So, so sort of that, that year, the start of that, that preseason, mm. um, sitting down with the club, they sort of said, you know, <laughs> you're a bit slow to play on the edge, <laughs> uh, to put it nicely. And... Um, you know, we think your future, if you're going to play NRL, is, is going to be in the middle. Okay. Um, so, you know, this preseason, you're going to train there and, and we'll see how you go. And um, and we went we went back to New South Wales Cup for our reserve grade. So we started with the Mounties and mm. and started the year um, sort of at the Mounties playing front row and sort of played a little bit of edge. Um, but then, yeah, that made the debut. And um, I sort of was sitting on the bench and I was, I was the first... First interchange to go on, which was a bit oh, of a shock. Really? I didn't, you know, I sort of thought I might get on the second half. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. The call came down to, to get ready going on. Um, and that first run I ran, I still don't know how, but Ben Hornby and Matt Cooper tackled me. And um, I think I must, I must have been running away from someone in the middle because <laughs> to get tackled by a center and a halfback, <laughs> I, I don't know what I was doing. But um, we, had, we had a couple of injuries that game and I, I ended up playing like maybe even 50 minutes. It's probably like the most I've ever played. Really? You know, like wow. I, I think now I, I um, you know, I've probably played a couple of games there where I've, where I've gone over over 50 minutes. Yeah. But for a long time, you know, like it was it was easily the longest I'd played. Yeah. And it got to a point in the second half where the trainer ran out and said, <laughs> don't attack, just defend. Because <laughs> I, I, cause, cause I hadn't played footy in a month too because I'd been 8th man oh, for no so way. long. And yeah, yeah. And I finally got to go, and I just, yeah, I was just, I was out. I must have looked bad if the, the message, defend. the message comes down to don't attack, just defend, just ass oh, hanging out, just, yeah, just fucking in rock. the washing machine, just yep. eyes in the back of the head. <laughs> um, okay, so you go on to play twelve consecutive games, which is you know fantastic for a young prop. You would have been what about twenty one at this age? Yeah, yeah, twenty 
22. 22? Yep. Um, and so the following year, you re-sign on a two-year contract. Do you play much footy the following year? Nah, so, so I, yeah, you know, the, talking about the highs and lows of footy, like that year was a high because we were struggling. Like that, that game at Canberra, we were uh, against the Dragons. We, we were bottom of the table almost last. Yeah, and, wow. um, and we went on a, we went on a run mm. and ended up making the finals oh, wow. um, and beat Cronulla week one in front of like a home crowd. It was six versus seven back then. And yeah, it was like, 22,000 people at Canberra yep. Stadium, you know, and we'd played, I'd played a, my second or third game, we played against the Titans in front of like 6,000 people and we got booed off at half time. <laughs> like, you know, f f f 10 weeks later, like <laughs> yeah, we had 22,000 people like cheering us wow. on. And, you know, I was thinking, how easy is this first grade? Like, <laughs> I'm living the dream, you yeah, know, like yeah, I well, yeah. got in first grade, I haven't even been dropped. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and uh, you know, I bounced into that next preseason, like, mm. this is, this is what I want to do, you know, yep. like, yeah, you know, not, 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 I didn't get ahead of myself and think I'd made it, but it was like, yeah, how easy is this? I was yep. just a young guy. You got living out with my the dream. momentum of it all. Kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. And, yeah. um, and I, and I had a really good preseason. Like I, I played well in the trials. Um, you know, as, as we said before, like, you know, the, the Fernsey had said, you know, you, if you play well in trials, you'll get a spot. And yep. after the last trial, he sort of said, um, you know, I'm going to pick you round one. Um, and I think Brett White was coming back from uh, ACL and, and Tommy Leroy Lars, you know, were, were there and he said, you know, I'm going to pick you and I'm going to have to pick one of those other guys and not pick the other one. Yeah. And, you know, that like was crazy to think that I'd got ahead of one of those guys. Absolutely. Um, and played sort of played round one and we, um, we played Penrith and it was about 40 degrees at Penrith and we got touched up and, um, mm. And then we went up to the Gold Coast the next week, and again it was like hot as, <laughs> and um, and we got touched up again, and and um, and <laughs> talking about being on the fringe, that's when I got the, yeah, you know, we sort of we sort of got the warning the week before it was like, um, you know, we can't, you know, if a performance like this happens again this week, you know, changes are going to be yeah, made, yeah, and um, and then the, and then the same performance happened, and and the Monday, um. Yeah, there was only one change made and it was oh. it was the rookie gone <laughs> <laughs> and um you know I, I to be honest like i look back now and i, I didn't handle it well at yeah, all yeah okay. um, kicking stones and kicking stones yeah, yeah. like I, I went you know i sort of i've done a few talks um you know with um like students and and a few corporate gigs and stuff just about overcoming adversities and and this is one of the things i talk about and you know, the, uh, Wednesday night, um, you know, I was still a young guy, I was still at uni. Mm. Wednesday night was the uni night. And, um, you know, I, I was kicking stones because I thought, you know, like the one change that's been made is, the, is the rookie front rower who yeah. had played 20 minutes both games, you mm. know, like. And you feel like, you know. Even though I hadn't played well, no one had played well, you know. Absolutely. Like, like, and you feel like, what, what I'm the, I'm the <laughs> yeah, reason? Yeah. Like, what about all the other people that didn't play <laughs> yeah, well? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, I rang up my uni mates and said, let's go. Mm let's go get drunk and um you know the sad day i played reserve grade and again like you know let's go have beers and i'm still i've still got the shits yeah um and you know like you know sort of stop sort of almost almost like looking back now it was like i was trying to make the coach feel sorry for me you know like yeah okay for dropping me but yeah he doesn't care he's yeah you know, he's moved on if um, anything he's <laughs> a bit of piss him off yeah yeah yeah, yeah um and so, like, I, I got in a bit of a, you know, that was my cycle, reserve grade drink, yeah. reserve grade drink. And, mm. um, and it, it, was, it was probably, you know, around seven or eight maybe. And, um, again, a couple of, couple of injuries to some front rowers. And, and, um, and by this stage, um, you know, I, it's, I wasn't playing, you know, terrible footy in reserve grade, but I probably wasn't playing my best footy either. Yeah. And, um and Paul Vaughan, you know, one of my best mates, yeah, gets the call morning. up to debut. And, um, you know, I guess that was that was when I realised, you know, like I've been kicking stones for eight weeks and now my best mate gets to debut. Yeah. Good on him, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, I lost know, my spot. I've like, lost my spot. Yeah. Um, and that's when I sort of, you know, was, I guess, a wake-up call. But, it, yeah. you know, if, I'd, if only I'd realised it six weeks <laughs> earlier. But then, you know, like I, I did sort of, um, 
you know, knuckle down, start to play good footy, and then about yeah. a month later, I um, I broke my arm and um, had to get sort of both the both the bones in the forearm plated, yeah. um, and straight off the bat, they were like, "That's your season done." Um, real learning, real learning year. Yeah, real, real, yeah. real learning year. Um, and then yeah, so for sort of that year to start on the high, you know, like I look back and I think. You know, I'd done all that hard work to get ahead of an origin player. Yeah. Um, and then spent the, the year in rehab <laughs> to finish off the year. It's it's just like when you're young, I think you not that you become entitled because you don't become entitled, but you just you you don't keep as you get older. I, and I, I assume you're the same, but you've constantly got to remind yourself like you aren't owed anything. Yeah. You aren't owed anything. Again, not that you're sitting there going, I deserve this as a kid, but I don't think it's as as much in the forefront of your mind of like you've every day you've got to rock up and earn that jersey yeah yeah i think like yeah as a young guy it's sort of just you're just sort of loving the ride yeah like, absolutely you know like you're living your dream and you're um and you're sort of a little bit naive to it mm. um yeah especially like as i said it, it i debuted we started winning we made finals mm. yeah camera hadn't made finals at that stage for yep. a long time like sort of and you know the town was buzzing and yeah and you know all my mates were like yeah you're playing first grade yeah, how like this, this is how good's this mm. um you know off the off the back of that like, match payments i got to buy a house you know yeah. like I finished uni that was paid for by the club like i was yeah just you know almost in the clouds a bit like this yeah. is great totally. um but yeah you said sort of as i said you learn the rugby league roller coasters oh, you got the highs and the lows absolutely absolutely okay so 2014, uh, you play residence for New South Wales against Queensland. So, at the very least, it seems like your form's good. Like you, you is it you learn from last year and you come back and rip and tear kind of thing. Yeah. So that at that end of that um, 2013 year was the fern. They've um, got the sack got and moved on. Yep. yeah, got moved on and um, and Ricky comes to coach. Yep. Um, and I sort of it was a bit of uh, you know, sort of a bit unfortunate but um yeah, we got sort of towards the end of pre-season and and ricky just said i think i just i just see too many middles mm. um in this squad ahead of you um and it sort of said like besides josh papali we don't really have any edges really killing it mm. um and he said i know you've played edge as a junior um you know how would you feel about playing playing the edge mm. um in this last trial and and you know potentially in first grade and i sort of jumped at it because totally. you know you're sort of saying i'm not going to pick you as a middle but i might pick you as an edge yep, absolutely. um and, and and i sort of again i was 18th man round one um that year so i, I you know i was pretty close mm. and then sort of went back to reserve grade and, and played probably played about 10 weeks on the edge and i just wasn't like we talked about at the start like i felt like i was just doing my job but yeah, i wasn't yeah. making an impact yeah. and um Certainly not the impact that I, that it you know you need to be doing at a reserve grade level to to stand out and get mm. get back into the NRL team and um, you know I remember at one stage sort of going to um, our coach at Mounties was which was Stephen asking him to sort of say to the Raiders can can I put Mark back in the middle yep. um, and I went back in the middle and just it, it's funny you know like when I went from the edge to the middle it seemed so foreign but going back into the middle just yeah, I was like, yeah, this is this is it. <laughs> I'd, I'm more comfortable here, yeah, and um, yep. and and played residence, so you know, form was good, but just just couldn't get a crack in uh, in the team. Yep. And so 2015, you you stay that year. 2015, are you saying you say 2015 as well? But then you sign a one year deal with the Storm. Yep. How did that come about? Yeah. So the end of that the end of that 14 season, hadn't played first grade all year. Um, sort of went to Ricky and said, what do I need to do to play? Yep. To play first grade and you know he was pretty honest he just said you know i, I like my front rows big and aggressive mm -hmm. and um you know he sort of said i, I just if that, if you want to play in a row I, I need to see more of that out here yeah um and i sort of went went back to um to reserve grade and and so, so it's funny i um i sort of probably went away from the things that i prided myself on just yeah. the little efforts and yeah yeah you know kick chase i sort of 
I just sort of worried, started worrying about how many meters I was going to make because I felt like that was that yeah. was what was going to get me get me in the NRL team. I'd, yep. And um, you know, I got picked and played a few games, and then um, fractured my cheekbone um, sort of mid year of that 2015. And yeah. I sort of just I sort of just became really frustrated because I'd felt like from that point where I'd went from the edge to the middle of that year before I'd, I was playing good footy and yeah. and I got like so I got picked in the residence. 2014 and 2015 so yeah. it's sort of it's sort of that's sort of the best of the rest you know like yep. it's the guys that are going good in 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 cup and it's kind of like what more can i do yeah you know, and, and everyone's got their you know ricky's got his certain type of players or whatever but from your perspective is i literally can't do any more i'm <laughs> i'm one of the best reserve great front rowers in the comp yeah uh, in the the country yeah yeah so i um i just started getting a bit frustrated and and uh, at that point asking you know what what i needed to do to play first grade and um and you know i felt like i was doing what he said and, yeah. and at the time like the raiders weren't going that well so mm. I, I i sort of you know i started to get again um talking about attitude and just the way um you know you conduct yourself and stuff like that um i just started to get a bit frustrated and you know kicking stones and sort of like yeah i felt like what was the point of trying to train hard if yeah if it was if it was i sort of felt like i was banging my head against a brick yeah. wall if sort I'm of thing get a fair crack like <laughs> yeah fuck what am i doing yeah and um and there was there was even one point where he sort of said you know like i'm gonna play you this week and then um the friday rolled around and he changed his mind and said oh i'm actually gonna gonna play play uh i, I think it was frank paul new asala um yeah. so i'm gonna play frank paul um you know keep keep training well and you might play next week and oh. like, by that stage you'd been 18 months and not playing you know yeah, that's a loss of a fringe like <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean that frustration yeah. of like yeah. I, just, I just want to clear yeah give me a clear road to go down and i'll go down and <laughs> yeah. i just need to know um so yeah by that point you know i'm 25 yeah and um you know i only got what do I, I had 19 19 nrl games to my name mm. and um and also, also just had, had gotten a bit comfortable. Like I said, I'd bought a house and finished uni, and um, you know, away from away from the field, I sort of just enjoyed going to Mooseheads a little bit too much. And yeah. um, <laughs> great place, <laughs> yeah, it's a great place. Um, <laughs> you know, invested a lot of money there in my early twenties. <laughs> um, but yeah, the um, I guess at that stage, um, you know, I had a, I had the option to stay at Canberra. Um, had the option to go to another club on a two-year deal. Um, what other you know, club was interested outside of Storm? The Warriors. Oh, okay. Um, so Andrew McFadden was there at that stage, and yep. he had coached me in twenties. Yeah. Um, you know, and both both sort of better 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 deals than what Melbourne were offering. But mm. you know, for me, luckily, you know, I didn't have I didn't have a family. I didn't mm. have to think about the money. For me, it was about the football and. Yeah. Melbourne had been for 15 years, like turning guys like me at that stage mm. into NRL players or even, you know, better, players, you know, yeah. like playing Origin in Australia. Um, mm. And it, it, I just thought, yeah, like this is too good of an opportunity. This is, mm. you know, a one year, one year deal on the minimum at Melbourne, but mm. who knows what might happen. And, and like, I just, thank God I took it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So you go to the storm. Did you have to do the army camp and all the, the new stuff work? Did you have yeah. To work? Yeah. I did the work program. Um, so walk people through what the work program's like. And you're by this stage, you're 26, 25, 26. 26 yeah. I was doing it, doing it with, um, Matthew White, who had come from the Titans. So he was, I think 30, maybe even older at that stage. So, oh, so they make everyone do it. Everyone does it. Oh, um, shit. yeah. The, the, um, <laughs> it's funny cause, <laughs> like I did it with Jeremy Hawkins, um, played a couple of NRL games at the Raiders yeah. and we both went down there at the same time. And, um, and the first couple of days we were, we were doing like sort of landscaping, a lot right. of like raking leaves and stuff it was you know, quite hard. But um, later in the week, we ended up with this guy who was a builder and he was um, excavating down to build like a duplex, but with like a, car park underneath like yeah, garages yeah. underneath so yeah. he was digging down and he'd hit he'd hit rock and so like he was like i don't really have anything for you guys to do and oh, um and, we, and me and jeremy were like this is a test yeah like, yeah yeah he's gonna go to belly yeah we're, we're like 
you know, we're sort of like, <laughs> we're thinking this guy's, like we were like, oh no, you know, we'll, we'll do whatever, you know, like yeah, we yeah. don't want, you know, we don't want you to go till trade that we're not working. <laughs> and um, He's in your head. And, you know, and then we're even like, we're even going to like, you know, pick up rubbish around the site and stuff like thinking, <laughs> you know, we're going to get in trouble for not working. And um, yeah, it was quite tough because you had weights in the morning, yep. you went to work all day and then come back and you do field. And, and it was like, you know, like, they weren't going easy on you. This yeah, was yeah. like Melbourne Storm preseason, you know, like and straight into it. And in the it. morning is like five, five o'clock, five thirty. Uh, first group four, second group five. First group is four. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, that is wild. And yeah. was it? Did it rotate? Yeah, I think it might have been. Must have been backs forwards or something. Um, four o'clock, or maybe it might have been five and six. No, yeah, I, don't, I I felt like it, I felt it like it was four. four. Maybe it was oh, maybe I was getting out of bed at four. Yeah. To make it for five. That means that's a, that's a three thirty wake up. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It must it would have been it would have been five o'clock start. But still five is oh. But I remember God. I remember it was definitely getting up in the dark and like getting home in the dark. Yeah. And then you've got a whole day of work to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Four. Yeah. And um, yeah, like it even got to the point where we um, <laughs> you know, like it, it rained. Um. One of the days we were at work, it rained and like everyone on the site went home and, and me and Jeremy, it was like lunchtime and we were like, we're, sit, we're sitting in his car out the front of the work site and we're like, what do we do? Like, you know, what happens if, what happens if Craig turns up and we're, yeah. not, we're not here? Like, as if Craig's <laughs> going to go to the work site. But at that stage, you're thinking, you know, like this is my second week here. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Had get... you heard any yarns of belly ache rocking up and, and, and so that's why you were on, on the edge or what? I think they were like, yeah, yeah. Like when you go down there. Yeah, you know we're gonna people will come check on you. Yeah, um, yeah. Looking back, I don't think they ever do. But um, but yeah, we are. Uh, yeah, we were sitting in the car and we just we just there's so much head noise. And and then <laughs> the other thing that when you go down there is you do the army camp before Christmas. They it's you know like they always do it then. And they've I don't know if they still do it this way, but it's only the new guys that have to do the army camp. Mm. And so you get down there and everyone. It's all anyone wants to talk to you about yeah. is how hard this army camp's going to oh, be. Fuck. So for like the four or six weeks of preseason before the army camp, You're just wigging out about the army camp, is every old player there talking about the army camp? Oh. <laughs> so you just got like so much head noise thinking. Absolutely. I just want to get this army camp out of the out way. Of the way, and like you're, you're you're just trying to get through a tough preseason as it is. Yeah. And then you got the bloody army camp. It's just like nightmare at the end of the tunnel. And it's all like you know, it's all you've heard about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people talk about not going down to Melbourne because they don't want to do the, the army, army camp. camp. <laughs> oh, and it's, yeah, so it's a two, two nights, three days? Yeah, two nights, three days, no sleep. Um, you know, for, for me, I, I, I had, I was lucky I had done a couple in Canberra. Yeah. Um, yeah, and because Once you've done one, you kind of know how to just, just get through it. Yeah. Switch off, get through it. Mate, my first one I did was a six day one oh. with the Broncos, 2005. I was like 18 or 17 or 18. <sighs> And it, and it was a it was one that was sprung on us, so we didn't know. Yeah. So we, we rocked up thinking it was going to be a drink up. Oh, everyone brought. It's even worse. It's even worse. <laughs> so everyone brought their like porties, and they even said on the phone, "Oh, because what happened was I was sitting in the park, and I got a call from Ivan Hinjack, assistant coach at the time, and he was like, "Hey, mate, Brett Seymour's getting a shoulder reconstruction. He can't come up to Sunshine Coast with us. Would you like to join us, the first grade squad? Because they'd never been a part of it." <laughs> yeah. And I'm like. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and he's like, mate, bring your boardies. It's just, just go <laughs> to get to know the first graders. You know, everyone gets, it's bonding. It's what a bonding. stitch up. Mate, we rock up and we're all sitting around. The, the mood's good. I'm pumped. Like, I'm, I'm like Berrigan's there. Like all of these big dogs are all there. I'm just like so starstruck. Then this army drill sergeant sprints <laughs> in. He's like, get outside, get, in, get your kid off with us. We're all sitting there. Initially, people were laughing. Going, yeah, yeah. What the fuck, are you yeah. serious? Yeah. Who's this weirdo yelling at us in army fucking camouflage? <laughs> um, and then he was like getting in people's faces like, this is not a fucking joke, rah, rah. They made us put our phones away, took us out to the, the field, stripped us naked, put the army kit on us, boom, took us for six days. We were just, it was like we were hot, like literally like we were taken hostage. Stolen. They, and they, they had to message all of our missus and that because that missus didn't know where we were. <laughs> we couldn't answer our phones. Um, Six, yeah, five, I think it was like five nights, six days. That's and they were doing head noise shit like first first two nights and three days, we didn't sleep, similar to yourself. Yeah. Just lugging jerry cans everywhere, the, you know, typical yeah. stuff. But then they were like, all right, boys, we're, we're leaving the sunny coast. 
we're going and they're like dropping hints like all right now the drinks up drink up <laughs> anyway we're driving oh we must be going to the goldie we must be going to the goldie miss the exit miss the exit <laughs> they take us down to northern new south wales and tail us up for another three days oh. mate it was a fucking absolute i lost like 10 kilos Darius yeah. lost like 12 kilos. Yeah. We, we were like had leeches all over us because we were only allowed to shower in the creek, like in oh. the fucking, the creek that was there. Um, Scott Minto was like, couldn't sleep and he <laughs> thought he had inso- insomnia. Went to the army dudes, they're like, oh, we've got a sleeping tablet, here it is. He gave, they gave him the tablet. The next day he's like, woke up, oh, I had a great sleep. It was just Panadol. <laughs> like just, they fuck, just did all weird shit to fuck us up, man. It was crazy, <coughs> yeah. absolutely wild. Um, okay, so you get through the camp. Um, and you make your debut for the storm. Yeah, um, not, the not second year. The second year, yep. yeah. So I um, again, I, I got through to the last trial and um, and sort of broke my thumb. Oh. Um, and yeah, did every didn't miss it. Didn't miss a uh, a session of the storm preseason and and do your thumb in the last trials. That's heartbreaking, but yeah. um, yeah. So so got my um, had to get my thumb done. Um, I think I was out for about eight weeks and yep. then sort of in the process of coming back, got a stress fracture in my foot. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, I, I got to the point, um, you know, like that's sort of towards the end of that season and um, I'd only been, I'd only gone down there on a 12 month contract. So I, um, I sort of, I sort of, you know, I, I knew I was, it's not like I, didn't want to do it anymore, but it was starting to starting to ask the question of whether no, it was worth, worth it. it. Yeah. yeah, and um, you know, I was starting to talk to some Q Cup clubs that were offering, you know, okay money, good yeah. job. You yeah, know, maybe maybe that's what I look at doing. And um, and I think I, you know, I hadn't really heard from a manager much um, <laughs> yeah. that year, being injured and not playing. And um, and so I sort of got to the point where I, I went to the club myself and just said. You know, I don't really want to go to another club and start again. Mm. Um, if there's a spot for me here, I'll stay. But otherwise, I'm just going to go play Q Cup. Yep. Um, can you guys sort of let me know what you're thinking? Mm. And, I, and I went to uh, – Marky Bretner was our development coach. I sort of had that convo with him, um, you know, on a Monday doing review of, of my game in reserve grade. And Craig rang me that night and said, oh, mate, you know – I think you would have played NRL here if if you um if you didn't get injured. And he said, you know, you're playing good footy at the moment in reserve grade. Mm. I'd sort of been back playing for about a month, and um and and he and he said, you know, there's a, a spot here if you want to stay for another 12 months. Mm. And um and so you know, sort of the next day, I went went back into the club and I said, look, <laughs> I haven't really heard from my manager for a while. Um, I don't really want to give him the five percent for the no way. for this deal I've organised yeah, myself. Absolutely, um, <laughs> you know, like, can you just make make the offer to me direct? And yeah. they sort of they were good. The Frank Panisi just said, you know, you need to you need to let your manager know that you he's yeah. no longer representing you. And then when that's done, I'll make the offer. And how did the manager not know that? You know, like, like <laughs> you know what I mean, like, how come the manager didn't come to you? Yeah, had a spot ready anyway, managers. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and um and so then i you know I'd, I'd been speaking to my dad and he sort of he sort of said you know the first rule of negotiation is is don't take the first offer and <laughs> and i said yes yeah, sweet and so <laughs> the offer came through and it was better than what i better than what i was on um <laughs> you know it was sort of just it, it, there was match payments in in the deal and yep. i'd have to pay me manager so i yeah. rang my dad up and because because you know the club could have offered me just a development contract yeah. um yeah you know, i was already on the minimum um so I was sort of expecting to get less than the minimum, yep. um, maybe even a train and trial. And, and yeah, the, the offer came through and I rang my dad and he said, take it, take it now. <laughs> and I said, hang on, you know, yesterday you were saying, don't take the first offer. And Worst you, negotiator <laughs> ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I, I took another 12 months mm. at Melbourne and, and um, the next year got to play for play for the club and so yeah 2017 you make your debut for the club against the panthers round five and you know you make a total of nine appearances but you the club also goes on to win the the comp yep what was that like you know going from a bloke that might just go play q cup to being a part of the squad that wins a premiership yeah it was a um it was a good experience you know like obviously um being around the team and and, and getting to play with with the big three and mm. even just play for a 
for a club I grew up supporting. Yep. You know, as a kid, it was a, a dream come true. And, and you know, those nine games sort of came in and around that origin period. Yep. Um, you know, so it was it was good. And, and um, I guess it was it – was, it gave me confidence too because all of a sudden I'd had played in – you know, at Canberra I'd played for a club who was struggling and yep. now I've played for a club who – has won a grand final and yeah um you know even though it was only nine games the thing that i guess that melbourne do really well is um they put a lot of time and effort into those fringe guys mm. and um and you know it's why they're so good it's why when when guys leave that there just seems to be these players that no one's heard of that take their spots and yeah um yeah it's because they do do spend a lot of time improving everything about your game and i guess the the thing that they did really well was for me was to understand uh i guess what my strengths were in my game and mm. and that you know I, I spoke a little bit about a canberra trying to be a player that i probably wasn't mm. um just because i thought that's what the coach wanted to get in first grade and mm. here it was in melbourne saying we just want you to be you yeah um yeah. you know if work if you're a hard worker that's like craig craig loves that loves um, that absolutely you know and, and so if that's good enough at the team best team in the comp then yeah that's good enough at any team surely absolutely yeah sure <laughs> you'd be surprised as you know <laughs> well um what's something you've got any bellamy stories of you know what what he's like what you know separates him or confidence he's instilled in you oh, i guess he's you know like he's the hardest working guy mm. at the club mm. and that's what he expects of his players and that's what his players do like you go you go to melbourne and um you know like at canberra you know to if you did extras after training or before training you know like <laughs> you'd sort of get ribbed a little bit yeah. about being the teacher's pet <laughs> you know like it's just how yeah how it was and um you know you go to melbourne and like dale Fanukin and jesse bromwich and christian welsh yeah you know kevin proctor when i was down there tohu harris like <laughs> All these guys that are rep players, they're doing extras after training, yep. before training. Like they're coming in on their days off to do gym and recovery, and yeah, wow. Well. And you're thinking, well, like, how am I going to get in the team if I'm not doing yeah. what they're doing? Like, absolutely. And um, and Craig is the first guy to walk in the in the um in the building, and in you know, like, when you, when you get the you know, as a player, you still get the training pretty early, but Craig's already trained. You know, like he's already wow. done a gym session, and he's and he's in his office working and um and because he he works that hard you know yep. it he expects that of the playing group and the playing group you know are already doing that so if you're a new player there mm. then you quickly realize that's what yeah that's what you need to do absolutely um, what about um playing with a guy like cameron smith did you get play many games with him yeah yeah like training with him in um yeah like i said i played um most of my games in and around that origin period yep. so but still you know he Obviously, he only missed probably one of those games. Mm. Um, and uh, I still remember, like, one game where I sort of was, like, maybe 20 metres from the ruck and he sort of just – it wasn't – I wasn't meant to get the ball. Mm. And he just sort of got up and just, like, hit me straight on the chest. And yep. I sort of caught the ball and looked up and there was no one sort of in front of me and I got a legs tackle, a quick play the ball. Yeah. And I thought, geez, he's a freak. Yeah, like, like how did he know? <laughs> like, I wasn't even expecting the ball. I'm not even. I didn't even see the space until I had the ball. Fucking and no. um, you know, and he just hit me. And like, you play with him, you know, as a middle, you go on, or even if you, you know, you might not even get on, but you, you know, you you go on and you're you're buggered. Like five minutes in, you you yeah. go off at half time, and you look at Cameron Smith, and he's not yeah, even he sweating. Did. It's crazy. <laughs> I, I, yeah, and he doesn't look like he, you know, the most athletic, yeah. and he's really cruisy, as you know. Yeah, just like. He's a master. What's what about a guy like Billy Slater, like or even Cooper Cronk? I've always heard like Billy Slater on the field. He just he's like a coach. Pretty yeah, much. yeah. He's um just everywhere. Like and mm. and that's like really good um, communicator. But um, the thing the thing that I like will remember from Billy is we went to um, that first preseason. He was coming back from his shoulder, so mm. you know like he was back training when everyone when all the new guys all the young guys were there and we would do we do like um you know like conditioning games mm. and um <laughs> you know like billy would go home and so all our all our um sessions were taped mm. and he'd come in the next day or whenever we'd play that game again and he'd be like this is how we win it like this is 
you know, like yeah. he, he'd what the the offside touch game or whatever, yeah, the whatever comments. it was. Like if it was like a you know an offside touch game, he'd come back to training the next day or whenever we played it again and go, I, like I, I went home and watched this game. This is how I think. <laughs> this is how I think it'll be easier for it, for us. As yeah, a, yeah, as a group. you know, as as the boys trying to train and get through it. But Holy this is also how we're going to win. <laughs> wow. And wow. You, and you think, what a, you know, how competitive. That's, I've literally never heard that before. Like, he's watching offside touch games to get the win. Yeah. Far yeah. out. Yeah. Um, that's incredible. And I mean, it, that's why he's one of the goats. Yeah. And, and then I guess with Cooper, the, um, the story that, like, or the thing that I remember about him the most is, um, you know, at one stage we sort of got a penalty and, and he sort of you know, kicked it out and called the play. And he sort of, like, you know, by the time you get a penalty and kick it out and, tap it you've got maybe a minute mm. if that but he sort of like he sort of got the ball and he's about to kick it out he calls calls the set he kicks the ball and then he says it was you know me nelson and someone else and he goes like nico you do this run nelson you do this and then nelson you get here like or yep. well you get on this one and it was and like the play was set up for that play three like you know nelson to, to sort of run at a halfback yeah um but I was probably in the best. I was in that position where it was going to be. But he'd sort of like mix it around because he knew like he knew the strengths of each player, and he yep. knew he knew that it would probably be better for Nelson to run that run than me or Welsh. And he knew that the first run was probably better for Welsh yep. to run than me. And wow. The second so he would like was, change a play up with specific players. Yeah, he'd sort of call the call the call the, the set, and everyone you know as middles we knew we knew sort of what what was expected of yep. and what points of the field to get to. Mm. But then he would sort of on the run adjust just so that he Far knew which out. which carry you were going to take. take this, you take the first one. Yeah. You take the second one, and Nelson, I need you on the third one because that's going to be at yeah. the half. Far and he sort of out. just like did it on the run so easily, and I was like, wow, that's crazy. That's just like <laughs> he's thinking elite. Yeah. Elite. Yeah. Um, okay, so you you's, um, you know you're winning the the comp as a as a squad. How did the South Sydney um, contract come about? Yeah. Well, um, as I said, you know, like. I'd, I'd, I was pretty confident of getting another deal because I'd played, um, I played for the team that had just won the comp, but mm. <laughs> there wasn't, I wasn't actually getting much. And really? um, yeah, and, and I, uh, I didn't sort of have a manager, mm. um, and sort of, so I'd sort of gone to Melbourne again, like I had the year before, and said, you know, let me know if there's a spot here. Mm. They'd, I, I thought, oh, I got a contract when I didn't play. Surely I'll get a contract when I do <laughs> Surely, play. Surely, absolutely, and, um, in a grand final winning uh, squad as well. Yeah, and it was sort of, you know, this was before um, sort of finals and end of the year, and they were really good. They sort of come back and said, look, we don't think there's going to be a spotty for you. And mm. so at that stage, I um, spoke to a few of the boys about who their manager was and, mm. and, and gave my manager, my now manager, a call. And and he sort of said, mate, I'll get you a gig. You just played f for the Storm. And yeah. Um, yeah, you know, sort of a month went by. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> mate, don't really have much for you. Yeah. Um, and then the finals had come and gone, and I played a G the boys had won the GF, and we'd sort of had a few few drinks to party, and mm. and um, and it was sort of by that stage I sort of started talking to some Q Cup clubs again, thinking, wow. you know, I'm not getting any. That's wild. I'm to not think getting a anything. Grand final squad player would have to be forced to yeah take Q Cup kick. Yeah, and. Um, and it's funny, like I, um, I'd sort of said to some, to a couple of clubs. Um, you know, I'd spoke to Burley, East, and Sunny Coast, mm. um, and and it said, you know, I, I've got a, I've got a sports science and a sports management degree. I really liked the sports management. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, it's probably not about the money that I'm going to get to play footy if I'm going to go play Q Cup. Mm. Um, it's probably more about the job and and what you can provide mm. for my future. Yeah, and they were, you know, like sort of really good and said leave it with us and you know a couple of clubs said send you your resume and um you know one club rang up at one stage and said um you know i've been talking to the queensland institute of sport i thought oh, how good yeah and they said there's a you know there's a gig going there as a lifeguard Oh I thought, oh, that's sort of not what I really went to uni to do. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> sports management, sports science for a lifeguard. Yeah. Um, and but because on my resume I had I had been a lifeguard when I finished <laughs> high school as my summer job, you know, to sort of like Fuck. just get some money yeah. at that stage. Um, and then you know, like another club rang up and said I got a, you know, got a gig selling sweeps. Um, Again, I thought, how hard is it? surely I can get something better yeah, than that, you yeah. know what I mean? And um, 
And then, you know, sort of another club said, you know, you've got a sports science degree, but it's pretty much just a, a PT <laughs> degree. I'm thinking, yeah, like I just not feeling the love at all. And, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. and then so it sort of we got to the point where, um, as I said, the grand final, the grand final has been won and played. I went to um, went to Queenstown with with Big Stimo and Joey Stimson and, and Welshie and mm. came back and and uh, didn't really know what I was going to do. And then um, my manager had, had sort of said, you know, if South Sydney showed a little bit of interest at the start, mm. um, and so I said it didn't really go anywhere. But um, by that stage. Um, Madge had been had been replaced by Siebes yep. and and my manager said I sort of I sort of know Siebes I have his number I can give mm. him a call yeah. and then Siebes rang me and said you know I, I don't sort of have much for you here mm. but um, you know you're probably a bit bit different um, style of middle than what we do have here and, yep. and said you know that if you come and, and work hard there may be a chance for you to play some NRL and and he'd sort of been at Melbourne before my mm. time but. He rang um, Big Rollsy and, and Jason Rolls was our mm. forward coach and he gave me a big rap, which which helped. And and Dave um, Fernan was the assistant coach at yep. South and so he obviously knew me and gave me gave me a bit of a rap. So yep. so yeah, Siebes eventually sort of gave me gave me that twelve month opportunity and um, and so I, I said to uh, said to Perry, my my beautiful wife, I said, oh, do you want, do you want to move to Sydney? And, and she'd sort of said early on, you know. I'll move anywhere that's that's warmer than Melbourne. So probably ruled out going back to Canberra and maybe yep. maybe New Zealand, but everywhere yep. else was on the table. And so she said, "Well, you know what else? What else do you have? You're not getting <laughs> anything in Queensland." And so yep, yep. Um, yeah, so we made the move to to Sydney. And um, she she grew up in Burke, and as I, as we spoke about, I, I grew up in Leeton, and probably never thought we'd ever live in Sydney, but we we came. Here you are. Yeah. And so you know you know make your South Sydney debut round one. And, um, you know, you make 12 appearances that year. It's a pretty successful year, you know. Was that yeah. something that you were like, like, thank God that, you know, I'm fucking starting the year. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, um, you know, I've always sort of, I guess, as a, um, you know, I'm not the, not the quickest bloke or the most powerful bloke. Mm. Um, so I've always been pretty fit and, and, a, and a good trainer. Mm. Um, and, you know, I worked that out really early on. And, um so I just came here and ripped in, and um, and got to got to. St- I actually started that round one, um, oh, good. round one game um, over in Perth, and then yeah, played played the rest of the games off the bench, and then um, and I, I sort of got dropped a couple of times, and then one of the games I was playing reserve grade, I broke my leg. Mm. Um, Fucking hell. So yeah, so uh, again, like yeah, pretty successful year, and yeah, um, South went well, and so. Um, yeah, I guess sort of the um, the NRL roller coaster kept continuing. Kept continuing. And so that year when Steve's leaves and Wayne comes in, do you sign a, a one year deal when Steve was still there, or does Wayne resign you? Or no, nah, I signed the one year deal when when Steve was still there. Mm. Um, so were you rattled? You going, oh fuck, here we go. Well, yeah. Initially, I, I mean, you sort of you don't know. Mm. Like I, I'd seen. I played enough footy by that stage <laughs> to know that there can be some coaches that love you and yep, some that maybe love other players. And so, mm. yeah, I just didn't know, didn't know, I didn't know Wayne, so I didn't know what was going to happen. And as as Wayne's now sort of told me when he was coming to the club, mm. um, he didn't know me either. And and he rang Sammy Burgess and sort of said, you know, just ran a few names by him that he didn't know. And mm. luckily for me, Sammy said, you know, like. You know the boys love playing with him. He has yep. a dig. Um, you know he's he's a good player and mm. good guy. And, and sort of Wayne said, "That's that's all I need. Need to hear. I'll yep. uh, I'll keep him." And um, and then yeah, that first year under Wayne, um, again the club, the club offered a twelve month um, contract for for the, the next year would have been twenty uh, would have been twenty twenty mm. to go into twenty twenty. And yep. um, and I went to Wayne and sort of said. Um, yeah, I've been sort of off contract now, f- yeah, for the last probably five years, mm. off contract signing twelve month deals. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I and I said, yeah, you know, like I'm at the point in my life now where getting married and sort of want to think about having a family. And is there any chance I could get a two year deal? And mm. Wayne sort of laughed at first, and then he said, "How old are you?" So, <laughs> oh, yeah, 
30 next year or whatever I was. Mm. And um, he goes, oh, mate, I only play for 30 minutes every week. I'll give you, I'll get you two years for easy. Leave it with me. <laughs> he goes, you can play till 35 if I keep playing you for 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, so, good. And, that, and 2019 was the first year where you went all the way to prelim. Yeah. What was that like? Yeah, so that, that 2019 year, um, again, got dropped once, but played 24 games, I yep. think it might have been. And, um, and yeah, felt felt like I'd, I guess, established myself as an NRL player yep. and, and, and proved, proved it to myself and, yep. and, and, um, and others. Um, and then, yeah, the year before, uh, the boys had played the, lost the prelim to the Roosters when I was 18th man. And mm. then that year we lost to the Raiders. Raiders, yep. Um, so, yeah, then... Um, it was a bit of mixed feelings, you know, because I, I knew how much making the grand final would be for to the Raiders in that community because I'd, I'd played there, but mm. to be the one that lost it was a bit <laughs> heartbreaking. Um, and I mean, notching up 100 games too, that's got to mean a lot. Like, fuck, uh, one year deals your whole career and it was like nearly over two times in a row. Yeah. That would have been cool. Yeah, yeah. As I said, um, you know, like there's twice in my career that I, I went two years without playing almost pretty much – uh, two years without playing NRL game, so wow. when that's what you're trying to do, it's um, <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> it's it's tough. So tough. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, to um, to to I guess get to to 100 games was, was a pretty mm. good pretty good feeling. Who's been the best player you've ever played with? Where it's just another level. Oh, I think it, like it'd be hard to go past Cameron Smith. Mm. Um, what was it like for you being a massive fan of Slater and then playing with Slater? <laughs> yeah, it was like a little kid, you know. Mm. Um, <laughs> when, we, when the year that we won that, that 2017 grand final when the Storm mm. won and I'm in the dressing sheds and, you know, I knew I was leaving and Billy was retiring and I thought I'm probably not going to get this opportunity again and yeah. I had a few beers in me so I was... You know, <laughs> a bit uh, of liquid courage. A bit of liquid courage. And I went up to Billy and said... Yeah, like as a 12 year old, you're my favorite player. Can I, can I just get a photo? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I've, I've played, what are you with? Like, you know, trained with this guy yeah, for two years, two but years. <laughs> it was like a little kid. I was like, yeah, can I, can I get a photo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Um, yeah, good. Um, okay, I ask all the boys this favorite rapper of all time. And if you're not, if you're not a rap man, you can say artist, any artist. Oh, I'm not really a rap man. Um, I'm pretty into my country, to be honest. Um, so can I say can I say a country? Yeah, 100%. Um, probably Kane Brown, um, Midland. Sort of really enjoying. Mm. Um, I've seen uh, Luke Coombs live. Yep, which was he's he'd probably be up there actually. Yeah. And Chris Stapleton, one of those. We've had Luke Coombs before, so he's he's kind of he, and he rings a bell to me. So he must be you know you know I guess mainstream as well as country kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I think with with some of those, Amer- I don't, so I didn't realize how big country was in America till oh, I went really? till I went over there and yeah. um, and at Canberra there was a lot of the boys when I was coming through. You know, growing up in in the country, I hated country music. Oh really? Like, Mum would play like Dixie Chicks and stuff. <laughs> um, you know, and being a being a thirteen or fourteen year old, it's not yep. very cool to like Dixie <laughs> Chicks. Um, but yeah, coming through the grades at Canberra, like some of those, like Joey Picker and Sean Fensom and mm. um, guys like that, just used to love their country. Love and um, I sort of started to love it, you know, early, early on. Um, and and we went to New York. I went to New York at the end of 2015 with Matt McCurick mm. and um, and Jared Kennedy and Kyle O'Donnell were going over there with their partners. And Jared had met someone who was like, oh, I can get you guys. Um, oh no way a tour of the new york jets facilities yeah. and oh. and you can watch their the equivalent of their captain's run yep and we were like oh, like no way that's yeah. happening yeah and uh anyway it happened and and we rocked up and um and we sort of got a tour and we went through their dressing sheds as they were doing video before their captain's run yeah, or good. they'd called it something else and yep. um and they had this country music like pumping pumping wow and um and we're thinking like this is the last, like, I did not expect the, yeah. the NFL team, like They're the Pumping New York country. Jets, to be playing country before they do their captain's run. Like, yep. that's, I just didn't expect it. And, yep. um, and the goal was like, yeah, the, 
the boys love country life. Yep. It's massive over there in America. Yeah. Massive. Yeah. So I guess um, some of those artists that if they make it over there, I guess they almost yep. are mainstream. Yep. Uh, favorite movie of all time? I oh, haven't watched it for a while and I'm sure... I'm sure plenty of boys have said this one, but remember the Titans. Yeah, it's a classic. Yeah. It's probably the most liked. It's a great movie. I mean, it's just a classic. <laughs> yeah, Doesn't when you're a, like a, a teenager trying to make it as yeah. a football player, like it's the perfect movie to 100%, watch. 100%. <laughs> yeah. uh, mate, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, good luck in the new year. Hopefully you can go one better, but uh, yep. thank you so much, bro. Thanks for having me on, mate. Boom.